electric. Hi everyone, welcome back for another update video on this EcoFlow Delta II battery and the EcoFlow PowerStream microinverter. Now I've disconnected it at the moment from the solar panel, so there's no solar connected to this. And the reason for that is because I have lots of solar panels on my house roof and I don't need the extra portable ones for how I'm testing this. So it's just for my usage situation. So I've started charging this using the AC power from the house, charging the battery during the day when there's lots of solar from my home solar configuration. So the battery's fully charged. Then in the evening, I'll discharge it overnight and save the grid energy or save using my home storage battery. So I've been testing the usage case of just using the battery and the inverter without solar. And that works absolutely fine. One power cable in the back, connecting to a power outlet for charging, one power outlet connected to a different socket providing the power output. Plug the two in, you've got input when it needs charging, you've got output when it wants discharging. Whether you're using just a constant stream of energy or whether you're monitoring your smart plugs, your EcoFlow smart plugs, to work out what energy needs to be provided. So it's a nice flexible system and uh, for me personally, because I've got home solar on the roof, it's actually suiting just to use it without the solar, the balcony solar. I've been putting it to a little bit of different use today. So uh, today I took the battery out, disconnected it and took it out to the garden, used some power tools, did a little bit of gardening. I found it very practical and very easy. And then plugging it back in, when I bring it back in, <laughs> I had to brush some of the grass clippings off it, but uh, brought it back in. It's just two connections. One for the AC power, which goes in the back here and then plugs into an AC socket in the house. That's to recharge the battery. So I've been recharging it on home power when it's free from the solar energy I've got from the rooftop solar or when it's cheap rate energy overnight. And then the other power connection that goes in the side and through the microinverter, that goes into a different socket and that provides the output overnight. So two home sockets, one for charging, one for output. And uh, yeah, it's working really, really well. One of the difficult things to explain is that even though I have a home storage battery and a solar configuration here on the house, I'm finding it quite hard to let go of using this. It sort of doesn't make sense to use this to power the load overnight when I have a bigger home storage battery to cover it. But it's sort of nice that it reduces the house load, it's reducing the use of the larger home storage battery. So I'm finding it difficult to let go. Once I've started using it and those numbers and the amount of grid draw etc is being reduced, it's just quite nice to have it. So it's something to bear in mind. If you're going to purchase one of these to plug in and reduce the amount of grid uses you use, be aware that it'll be difficult to unplug it once you start using it. Interesting to look at the stats for the last couple of weeks. The first week uh, we did 7 kilowatt hours, 2.29 kilowatt hours came from solar, 4.74 kilowatt hours came from the battery. In the second week it went down to 3.86 because I'd unplugged the solar. So you can see the difference it makes when you have solar on there. Looking at energy flowing the other way, in the first week again 7 kilowatt hours, but it's 4.97 kilowatt hours went into the house. 2.06 kilowatt hours went to battery charging, so that was from solar panels to the battery. Now that I've taken the solar panels away, I'm charging on AC and I'm charging the battery directly. And that's why there's zero kilowatt hours going to the battery on the second week, because it's actually going to the battery directly, not through the power stream. Although it's not essential, I think these stats show and highlight the value of adding solar to a configuration like this. So finding the permanent use for this, I haven't quite found it yet. At the moment, powering the overnight load is really useful, but it's, I don't think it's the perfect use case for me because I've already got home solar. This really is the perfect use case for somebody that hasn't got solar, hasn't got a home storage battery and wants to do it and wants to make a start. Um, if I had a smaller home storage battery and it was winter time, then I bet I could be using this and adding another kilowatt hour of storage overnight and that would make a big difference. So it's worth bearing in mind what you want this for and how you're going to use it. But it's an extremely useful, practical device. And one of the things that I find with solar panels and home storage batteries, you're always looking for more energy. And when you've got more energy, you're looking for how to use it. So this is a very flexible way of using that energy. If you've got lots of energy in your solar panels, you can be charging a home storage battery, and then you can use it practically in places where you weren't able to use it previously. 
So yeah, having lots of fun with this Delta II battery. Did a um, discharge test on this a little while ago as well. So uh, ran a heater on it, I think a 500 watt heater for just over an hour, hour and a half, something like that. And it consumed 0.9 of a kilowatt hour, so 900 watt hours out of the 1024 watt hours, which is the nominal capacity of the battery. So 900 watt hours usable out of this Delta II 1024 watt hour capacity battery. That's not too bad, that's you know, it's around the 10% losses, 10% saved um, in the battery by the BMS, so you don't actually ruin the battery when you run it down to zero. It's not quite zero, really. So that's been a useful test to know what I can do. I've been outputting 90 watts continuously overnight. That does give me 10 hours of usage at 90 watts for our base load. So that's a very practical, useful thing. If I had a bigger battery or an expansion battery for this, obviously that could be two kilowatt hours. And then for 10 hours, I could provide an output of 180 watts. So there's a lot of capacity and a lot of potential for outputting this. How big is your base load? Um, if it's around the 100 to 200 watts, you know, I suppose that's normal. Under the 100 watts is quite low. But uh, if you're getting towards the 300 watts continuous, that's quite a lot. You probably want to start thinking about turning some things off before you actually start spending a lot more money on providing that background base load. I'm going to do a video on that separately about how much can you reduce your base load by if you go around turning things off. So that's a video to come soon. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. I've been enjoying using this product. And uh, yeah, a little bit controversial, isn't it? Plugging in a home storage battery, a portable one with a microinverter, straight into your house. As always, thanks for watching. Take care. See you again soon for more videos. Bye for now.